Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer. Today we're going over AI chatbot prompting fundamentals. Are you even watching the right video? Well, if your AI chatbot results aren't what you like them to be, or you're just starting out with AI, and you want to know the basics of an effective prompt, then yes. Questions answered in this video. What's the easiest part of building an effective prompt, and why is it simply to be organized? How do you be organized creating a prompt? Why should you be organized? Some examples of how you can be organized building a prompt. And finally, we'll end with the most important question, why should you care? Let's go ahead and jump right in. So here we are at Claude. Before we get started, locks, locks, <laughs> lots of videos linked in the description below. This is part three in a series and some other related videos that'll probably help you out if you're interested in this stuff. All right, to answer the question, how do you be organized building an effective prompt? You use delimiters to clearly indicate or bound any distinct parts of the prompt. Let's break this down. So delimiters first. What are delimiters? Triple quotes, hashtags, and XML tags. We're primarily going to talk about or show hashtags in this video. We'll go over all of them though. And I wanted to make sure to highlight that XML tags are items that are particularly useful or liked by Claude. So I've drawn those things out. Now let's talk about how you use these delimiters to indicate or bound any distinct part of a prompt. Well, what is the distinct or what is a distinct part of a prompt? Context, rules, instructions, references, and examples. Context. So if you've seen my other videos, you know that P, A, O stands for persona, audience, and output to help provide context. So that's where we would include that information. That context would go under the context delimiter. Under rules, this is where we would tell Claude things like do this, and then we would tell him, being careful not to hit the enter button here, uh, don't do that. And as you know from my previous videos, if you tell a model to do something, I'm sorry, if you tell it not to do something, you want to also include what to do instead. Uh, so when you do that, do that. <laughs> Instructions. Here is where you're going to tell it things like your role is to, and you give it its role. Um, references. So if you're telling the model to reference something, this is where you're going to provide that reference. And the best example of how this works is by showing you a previous prompt that I use over in Bard in the video link below, but now Gemini. Um, right here is how this works. So I've got what I call an, an agent. This is a loosely defined term. Uh, it's just a saved or pinned prompt. And I have provided instructions to Bard, now Gemini. And you see I have some bulleted instructions. We'll, we'll go into those in detail here in a minute. Um, I've given a, I'm given Bard or Gemini its role, and that's to analyze an area named in triple quotes and give back to me three of the best coffee locations in that surrounding area. So I need to give it a name of a city in triple quotes. That's what it's waiting for. That's its trigger to give me the answer from Google Maps. And so here I've given it Buenos Aires. I would hit enter, and then Gemini is going to do its thing and give me an uh, give me the three best coffees in that area uh, for me to check out. But this is not the point of this video, so we're going to go ahead and jump back. But I just wanted to show you how those triple quotes might work as a reference. Finally, an example in XML tags. So you can see here it starts out with the word example in front of the example and then with a forward slash in front of the word example in the last XML tag. We'll hit a little bit more of this when we dive into the actual example because it's confusing here out of context. All right, so we explained delimiters and the distinct parts of a prompt and how delimiters clearly indicate or bound those distinct parts of the prompt. We haven't talked about bullets though. Those are another part, another way that we can organize our prompt. And so we can use bullets or numbered bullets. Numbered bullets help us, right there, help us to specify the steps required to complete a task. 
And then any bullets help us to break ideas into digestible chunks. That's the gist of bullets. Pretty straightforward. All right, some of the so what real quick. Why? Why would you do this? Formatting with delimiters helps you to populate the prompt effectively. You're organizing it and you're leaving fill in the blanks that's reminding you to add information and not disclude anything, right? It is helping you to remember the information that you need to give it and of course organizing that information such that it's easy for the model to parse the prompt effectively. It helps the model to parse the prompt effectively three times real fast, right? And using bullets helps to break down complex ideas into smaller digestible chunks, as I said before. Bullets also help you to compose quickly. You don't need transition words like you do if you're writing a paragraph. You can just write those bullets. They don't have to flow, right? Um, so no transition words needed between sentences. And bullets, what you can do with bullets is you can list individually unrelated items. What does that mean? Uh, the best example would be a list of rules. Do this, don't do that, do this. You know, these rules don't relate to one another except that they all relate to the prompt. Um, so there you go. And using numbered bullets helps because when you chunk these individual steps, when you chunk it into individual steps, the process of doing this helps you to naturally provide more detail. So step one, do this thing. Step two, do this other thing. Oh wait, I'm missing something here. I need to provide a middle step. You, you naturally identify that missing detail and it helps you to identify that and then add it. Finally, these steps do also help the model to comprehend and execute your task or the task to your standards. So there you go. Enough of the explanation in the why, let's go ahead and jump into an example of how we can build this prompt um, using an example of building a lesson plan. And of course, I'm gonna start with the anti-example or what you shouldn't do. Uh, so we're trying to build a lesson plan and here's what we've done. Our prompt says, create a lesson plan using this chapter from my creative writing textbook. And this piece of text here is what we're going to call our chapter, all right? Our example or our reference. So this is a bad example of how you might ask an AI model to create a lesson plan for you. Hey, create a lesson plan using this chapter from my creative writing, writing textbook. Here's the chapter. Well, okay, that might work. Claude's pretty smart, so you might get some good results. But let's go ahead and break this down, as they say, chapter and verse. All right, so the first thing we want to do is provide context. So here we go. And we see we've got our delimiter here, prompting us to include persona, audience, and output. I'm not including output here because it's going to show up somewhere else. What's important is that we include all three. So persona and audience, you are a fifth grade English teacher teaching an advanced creative writing class. Context. So we've provided that. What is next? Context and then rules. All right. So here's our delimiter, rules, and then we've done, as you can see, bullets to help us chunk this. So provide only the processed text without any additional commentary. Claude will usually uh, begin its answer with a preamble. So providing, providing this rule, uh, you're eliminating that preamble. Just get right down to business. I already know you're a language model, so no need to remind me. If you've ever been reminded by a language model, this will stop that from happening. And finally, if you don't know the answer, say you don't know. It doesn't necessarily relate to this prompt, but always a good rule to include when you are when you don't wanna get a hallucination. Not that this will completely preempt that, but it's a good way to help avoid it. All right, so we've gone over the rules. What else can we talk about here? Instructions. So, instructions, output. I told you I saved output for later. Here it is. So. PAO, right? Persona, audience, output. So instructions, output. Your role is to turn the provided textbook chapter into a comprehensive lesson plan. To complete this task, think step by step. As we've talked about before, telling the model to think step by step reminds it to follow a logical sequence. You can help it further by providing that logical sequence, which is what we've done here. Step one, extract and summarize key concepts by section. Number two, 
convert each extracted concept into a 30 minute lesson plan with questions. Step three, design a homework assignment reinforcing key info from this chapter. And then the bonus question that I always like to add right here, important. If you have questions, ask before beginning. All right, so we've gone over instructions. I believe the last thing that we need to include is the reference for it to reference to create the lesson plan for us. All right, so here we go. Our delimiter, references, providing the chapter. So here is the chapter. And so what I wanted to do here is provide you two different examples of how this could work. The triple quotes, I haven't used a lot in this video. Here's one place it might show up. So if you told it, hey, I'm going to provide you this chapter in triple quotes, this is where you would do that. If you're working with Claude, like we are here, you would use the XML tags. And as I explained, this is a little bit clear, right? So we're giving it the chapter right here. That's the intro XML tag. We provide the chapter. Here's the chapter. And again, this is short. It's not actually a full chapter. And then we end the chapter and we've got that forward slash in front of the word chapter to be our closing XML tag telling Claude hey, this is where the chapter starts, this is where it ends, here is the chapter for you to do your work. So that is how that piece works. And as we do, all together now, I'll show you the entire prompt as it comes together to look as one. We'll start at the top, and I'll be careful not to actually hit return. So context, persona, and audience. Then we have the rules, which are broken up by bullet points, which help us to naturally provide more details. Uh, instructions, we've got our output listed here, and then we've got bulletized steps to help the model to follow in sequence and do all the things you expect it to do. Uh, we, I like to end with the important question so that Claude asks us questions if he, if he, ha he or she has them. Uh, references, here is the chapter. And then what I wanted to highlight here that is not included, we talked about providing an example for the model. Um, not included here, please see my few shot prompting video linked in the description down below. All right, if I hit enter, we're not going to get a whole lot because we didn't provide Claude a full chapter. But I will answer the question that I told you I would answer, which is why should you care? Well, why should you improve your prompting skills? AI is the future and the future is now. No, AI will not replace humans, but Humans that use AI will replace humans that don't. And the only way to good, get good at using AI is by using AI. Hey, thank you for watching. If this video has inspired you to try any of this stuff, please let me know. Love to hear that stuff. Uh, don't forget, lots of link goodness in the description below, other videos that are related and so on and so forth. If you like this, please subscribe or share it with somebody else that might enjoy it or find it useful. That is my goal. As always, if you leave questions, I will leave answers. Now go and be productive.